Hello everyone and welcome to the third lecture in the series Deep Learning with Tabular Data. In this lecture we are going to use the popular convolutional neural network architecture to handle tabular data. Let us see how we can do that. First we will talk about the architecture of a typical CNN, tabular data or whatever data. So the CNN is primarily or basically you can think of it like the collection of three different types of layers convolution layer, the pooling layer, and the fully connected or the dense layer if you're using KRS. So the convolution layer basically it is responsible for <coughs> sorry, extracting different features from your input image or in this case tab table. Then the pooling layer is used primarily for reducing the dimensions and concentrating the information from let's say a 2 cross 2 matrix into a 1 cross 1 matrix or a single value. And then lastly, in the fully connected layer, it is responsible for taking all the information that you have gathered in however many convolution filters that you might have used into a single value in the case of regression or binary classification or multiple values for multi-class classification. Okay, so now let us talk about how the CNN networks are architected for tabular input data. So now we first of all should have as many nodes in the input layer as we have features or the number of columns in the data sorry we can have as many input nodes sorry take number three we can have as many nodes in the input layer as we want or are proper as properly we will do or are optimal so now the input shape of all these nodes should be carefully written to the shape of the reshaped data, the tabular data that was reshaped to a grayscale or an RB, RGB or however many channels you want image. Now we come to the number of convolution and the pooling layers. This entirely depends on how complex or simple the function that you are trying to model or the whatever you are trying to model or predict is. If it's complex, you will have many convolution and pooling layers stacked on top of each other. If it's not so complex, maybe only a couple of convolution and pooling layers would be enough. So lastly, before we reach the final fully connected layer, we have to use a flattened layer. And this is because the convolution layers and the pooling layers, they will produce two dimensional output, while the fully connected layer can only handle one dimensional or a vector, one dimensional matrix or a matrix or a vector. So use a flattened layer before the last output layer, before the output layer, sorry, which would be a dense layer, a fully connected layer. And this will give you the requisite output that you want, classification or regression. And you should choose the activation function based on the type of task that layer is doing or is responsible for. It can either predict the probabilities of the instance belonging to different classes, or it can be just one of the hidden layers or one of the many stack, stacked convolution and pooling layers. So you have to use the activation function accordingly. Okay, so now we will see an intuitive understanding of CNNs with tabular data. CNNs, as you obviously would know, are usually used, and usually I mean always, almost always, usually used by with image data either grayscale, one channel, or RGB, red, green, blue, three channel image. But the tabular data is not an image, far from it, it's just text, numbers are text. So what we do is that we reshape this input image, input table, input row of the table to a matrix. Now it depends on our use case, whether we are trying to reshape into a grayscale or an RGB image. It depends entirely on the code that you have written either is fine. But mostly if you're going to use transfer learning, which we will see in the next lecture, in the next video, transfer learning would almost always work only with RGB, not with grayscale images. So yeah, reshape it accordingly. Then you can start feeding it into the convolution network. Now the convolution network, it will, it will think that oh, this might be an image because it has three dimensions which correspond to, corresponds to RGB. But it is actually your table which you have just reshaped and uh, cleverly passed along as an image. 
So one important thing to note while reshaping is that if you're reshaping, you are not going to introduce any new data, any artificial data into the ones that you already have. This is because artificial data will obviously corrupt the data. It is not authentic. It was not collected at the source and it might miss some phenomenon data distribution or something which might re uh, res result in wrong predictions or predictions that are way off from the actual actual answer. Okay, then now let's talk about the code. First thing before we start talking about the code is the data set. What data set did we use? We use the Pima Indian's Diabetes data, data set. I will give its link in the description of this video so you can go ahead and download it and play with it. This data set has eight feature vectors, eight inputs and one target vector, one output. I have listed the input variables here, pregnancy times and so on. And the output layer, output value is either zero or one, two classes, zero and one. Okay, so now let's talk about the pseudo code. First, we obviously we will load the requisite libraries, the ones that we will be needing in this code, which I will show you soon. Then we will load the data set and since this data set had both the feature vectors and the target vectors vectors in one file, I had to explicitly separate out the feature vector and the target vector vector. Then we will reshape this feature vector into images, either grayscale or RGB, grayscale in this case. And then we will feed it to the network. We will, first of all, we will declare the network, define the network, then we will compile it, fit it. And while fitting, we will feed this feed the data that we reshaped as images to our CNN which will then train and finally we will predict or make predictions on the data that will be as test. Okay so now let's go to the text editor and see the code. So as you can see I am loading the requisite libraries numpy, pandas and tensorflow, KLS etc. Then I am loading the data test and then splitting it into the feature and target vectors. Feature vectors are almost always represented by a capital X and the target vector is almost always represented by a lowercase y. There is no logic to it, it's a style but it's a convention so you should probably also follow this. Then we reshape the data here in the lines 20 through 27 into a 2 cross 1, 2 cross 4 image. So this data had 768 total instances. This reshape means you it's a four dimensional matrix. The first dimension has the number 768, which means that there are 768 different images. The second vector is the height of each image, two, two pixels, two rows. Third number, four here, is the width of each, each image, the number of columns in that matrix, four here. And lastly, this last number, the fourth number is a number of channels. And here we have reshaped it into a simple RGB, sorry, a grayscale image, so it only has one channel. And then we define the KRS model. We have a sequential model. The first layer is itself a convolution layer, then which consists of only one node and the ReLU activation function. So it, keep note here, the kernel size is two. Two means two cross two the input shape each image that it will receive will be of shape 2 cross 4 cross 1 meaning two rows uh, the dimension of the rows are 2 the dimension of the columns are 4 and only one channel a grayscale image then batch normalization to normalize the values then a flattened layer before passing it into the final tense the fully connected layer which will tell you which class it belongs to and note the fully connected layer, the final output layer has the sigmoid activation function and the initial convolution layer had ReLU. Then we compile this model, we use the loss binary cross entropy because there are two classes binary. Then we fit the model on the feature vector and the target vector and finally in the last two lines we are evaluating this model and finding it out, finding out its accuracy. Okay, so let's run it and see. So these numpy logs because we are loading the numpy database and also doing some numpy calculations, matrix calculations. Now as you can see the network training has started. 
this is faster than the LSTM that we did in the previous video because that LSTM had stacked stacking which was very complex which made it complex also this achieves an accuracy of 71.35 percent which is quite good but again less than the MLP that we had trained in the first video which achieved north of 77 percent accuracy okay that's all I had for you in this video I look forward to seeing you in the next video and remember if you like this video please do share it with your friends or family members whoever might be looking to learn python or deep learning and do subscribe to this channel so that you can have quick access to more such videos which will be released in the future okay